What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And today I bring you another review for another day for another game, and it's Far Cry 5. Now, this is basically the run and gun of Far Cry 4, but you rub Little Duck Dynasty in there, you grab your Matthew McConaughey, David Koresh mixed figure, and sprinkle the game world with folks who think the Second Amendment's like the original Knight Rider, and it can't be outdone. It is really a tongue-in-cheek look at the patriotic results of people left to their own devices and most likely a tremendous amount of first cousin humping. Also, thanks to Ubisoft for making sure that the codes were available a week in advance, which always makes things easier. So as always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Far Cry 5. Religious leaders allergic to shirts, universal soldier bear, and proof that man buns will bring society to its knees. Graphics are first. Well, on the PS4 and the Xbox original, you get the 30 FPS 1080 picture we most likely expect with these games. On the PS4 Pro and Xbox X, you get 30 FPS at 4K resolution. And I can say there was supposed to be a higher FPS option so you could run it at 1080p but get that increased frame rate. But updated fully, neither the Xbox X nor the PS4 Pro pop that, so I'm assuming it's for a patch later. Also, HDR across all platforms that can support it. And while not the best replication of its traits, it's still really well done here. Flying through the night sky in a helicopter outfitted with two people that you hired because you thought folks walking down the road with a 308 rifle was normal. It's easy to notice that jump in color gamut and brightness. When it comes to the PC, it is also supported, which is always nice. Now on a current gen i7 at 4.5 and a 1080 Ti, the game actually hit 4K 60 FPS with just a couple settings turned down from Ultra with only a couple bumps here and there. When comparing platforms, the console versions, of course, have a small number of changes like less trees far away and even some actual structural differences to rock formations. Now that being said, on all systems, there is a bit of popping in this game's world and it can get pretty brutal on the consoles with the occasional moment where it looks like you're recording somebody's garden in time-lapse photography as you're flying a helicopter or riding in a plane. But let's talk about Carnage for a second, because like the past Far Cry games, Primal notwithstanding, the games have always been known for throwing the largest number of explosives towards the largest number of explodey things and then seeing what happens. And I have to say, it's nice to have a game that doesn't really drop down to unplayable frame rates when you smash the light the world on fire button and you have four grenades going off, a car exploding, a chick turning into a puma next to you in a vision quest moment and right then an enemy plane is taken down and explodes like 30 feet in front of you. But sadly, that also shows a number of the game's weaknesses. Collision detection fails a large number of times, resulting in enemies dying and flying through the side of a wall, their body hanging out of it like something from Jacob's Ladder. That is actually going to happen quite often. Also, why they can usually navigate locations many times, it's like the AI is like, dude, I'm too busy for this ladder. And about three-fourths of the way up, they just sort of slide into being at the top of it. Here's the thing, though. I adore the world design. I love verticality, especially in games like this. And while Far Cry 5 doesn't trump the insane acrophobia moments of some of the past titles, there is this natural looking location and environment throughout the entire time you play the game. And it's drawing your eyes towards those locations that helps in the feeling of exploration. There's always one more hill, one more fire tower on it with a mysterious light or something else to cause you to want to explore. The main NPCs run from good to great in their overall look, but they do have a bit of that Ubisoft roughness to them that I think we've come to expect. For example, the leader of the religious mafia looks like he fell down a friggin' hill covered in blackberries, brushed himself off, and then got a facial. Or the sheriff, who is obviously trying to win a worse mustache award, but is apparently the only person in the running. Overall, I have to say, the FPS is mostly solid on the consoles and very good on the PC, and in combination with that and the fact that you have HDR on all the systems where it can be supported, and I love the overall look. Sound, music, and voice. You look like a hell. Yeah, well, I feel like it too. You need help getting back inside? Hell no, I'll manage. Let's do music first. It's everything that the incredible music from the TV show Justified did for that, but in game form. A naturalistic soundtrack with folksy moments interspersed with what sounds like the world's most depressed banjos playing in the background. Incredible tracks, and there are a couple moments like that when you take over an outpost and the celebration music goes off and you keep looking around for a 4th of July fireworks display. This also translates, though, to different musical choices to reflect the bosses themselves and their locations altering from the mystical and melodic country tunes to heavy industrial, depending on which of the leader's land you're traveling into, which was an interesting way of doing it, and I liked it. 
That brings us to sound. It's got a nice wide spectrum of sounds and the throaty explosions and deep bass of large ordnance is something that you notice right away. As I've talked about in past reviews, good audio is what separate excellent games from the just good ones as information is imparted to the player in a way that allows for more than just the sense of sight to be used. Here, for the most part, it is good, but I ran into one hell of a bug that would not go away. Occasionally, the surround sound would just lose its mind, and everyone sounded like they all ran off to hide in a train tunnel to record all their lines, all the explosions, and all the directional audio. And lastly, I have to say, I think we're all past the point where we thought suppressors work like you shove Steven Seagal ass first over the barrel of your weapon, and when you fire it, it sounds like he's whispering during a movie. Here, you really do have that all the time, though, and weapons in which you can suppress really have such a tight tonal layer to them that they sound a little goofy. They sound a little bit like paintball guns, and I would have loved to have seen that actually replicated in a more accurate fashion, especially because the rest of the guns at least try to in some way. That brings us to voice. Now, this is really well done from Faith's representation of hotness gone crazy, singing and dancing through trees one moment, conspiratorial tones the next. She sets the stage for what I think the other remaining leaders do, which is solve entrench themselves in their belief systems tonally. You can hear that come out. You can recognize that feeling of what happens when leaders of this kind end up gathering groups around them. And I can't lie and say Joseph Seeds as mercurial as Voss or as maniacal as pagan men, but he makes up for that with a more nuanced style here, that of a leader who suggests rather than orders, who believes, and of course he makes others do so. This is delivered with excellent speech direction throughout almost all of the game. But one special thing I have to absolutely talk about is the standout moment of a wickedly scary campfire story told in broad daylight while trucking down a camp trail. It's about somebody simply named The Cook. Very awesome moment in the game. Everybody here really seems to have pretty good voice direction, gameplay, and a bit about the story. So Far Cry 5 starts with you as the unnamed sheriff's deputy heading into Eden's Gate compound to arrest the radical preacher, Joseph Seed, who apparently spends all his time suffering from glaucoma, working out and fixing his man bun. What follows is a series of misadventures that runs through the tutorial as things go unsurprisingly poor for your small group of lawmen. And yes, the story does have a fairly rambunctious ending, by the way, but we'll discuss the journey. And when it comes to journey, let's get this out of the way. The towers are gone. This is not how the game divides out its locations at all. You travel to see what you see. Exploration, for better or worse, is hightailing in a car, setting a waypoint, and just driving from point to point to point to point, or running or walking, whichever way you want to. After the tutorial, the game actually opens up, and it's about you rampaging through the territories, killing game, fishing, taking down enemy strongholds, hiring resistance fighters, and reenacting Clan of the Cave Bear as best as you can as you try to take down Seed and his family. Each location has a variety of different activities you can perform and stories to tell. And it's in those stories, and it's in that almost novelization of the quests where Far Cry 5 has some incredibly entertaining moments. The way the game doles out information isn't really new, with major story elements unlocked as you work through one of the Herald's locations. But it's the side quests that feel so natural here. You might find a person wandering lost in the woods who's looking for a family member and help track them down, or liberate a truck stop from enemy forces and find inside various hints of horrible things done wrong to the family members, and then you find someone there who can start you off on another killing spree. Overall, it's just a more natural progression of quests, and the fact that they overlap one another, and as you continue to explore and understand the lore, everything starts to fill in the gaps and the layers. It is very well done. Also, I have to say I love the fact that as you travel through the lands and you hire people to fight with you, and you can get perks to actually have even more of them, each of these specialized fighters, of which there are nine, has a story to tell, and those stories not only open up the game's fiction, but they overlap, like I said, with the other quests. Also, the fact that Ubisoft went with a number of quests that don't involve shooting or involve some odd antic to the side helps to minimize a bit of the repetition that we might feel in other games. Now, speaking of shooting, let's discuss those who might join you. The specialist fighters you can get all have powerful side abilities like Adelaide, who can bring a chopper at full speed, allowing for you to quick exit some of the locations if you need, or Peaches, a wild mountain lion, barely tamed, that kills enemies on the sly. While this is an extension of the past Far Cry games, I love that it also allows for you to really hire three other generic fighters from the game world, each one of them having two random skills as well from more than 15. For example, there's skills like Veterinarian, which raises the other partners if they're hurt and they're of an animal type, or No Tracks, which makes you completely unseen in long grass. While the animals can't throw down suppressing fire like Grace can, if you couple them with someone who can heal them, they can extend your stealth outreach farther than almost anything else in the game. It allows for a building on, and to me, an experimentation of how you put everything together. 
You can also bring a friend into co-op, and while it doesn't impact their game at all, think of them as sort of a named hired gun, you can play all the way to the end with somebody else. And of course, whether you're alone or with somebody else, the shooting mechanics are what matter here, and Far Cry doesn't stray too far from its past titles. It's a bit changed, though. It does track bullet drop and loss of velocity over distance a little more here, but admittedly, at times, it feels almost too aggressive. There's these moments where non-armored enemies can soak up shots like the latest victim of a comic roast and just sort of shrug them off. It didn't happen a ton of times, but it happened a few times. Now as you shoot, stab, burn, blow up, and punch your enemies into the sweet, delicious hereafter, you can also complete challenges which unlock perk points. Make three dynamite kills, get some perk points. Stealth kill a legion of enemies, perk points. And you use those to buy the perks that allow you to carry more items, sabotage enemy trucks, return downed friends to battle even faster, craft a wingsuit, or be able to lockpick safes versus blowing them up all the time. Also, they have the crafting, which is based around mostly hunting and collecting. What's nice, though, is if you want, you can buy a perk that allows for a lot of those craftable items to be purchasable. So if you don't want to hunt, you really don't have to. But that sadly brings us to Far Cry 5's issues. First, each area you want to take down, you have a number of enemy patrols, and this really doesn't thin out until you've taken down the leader of that location. And actually, it ramps up a bit as you come near the end. This means running into enemy patrols every friggin' second because the number of people you're gonna see is actually a little staggering. And that's also an issue because the game's AI loses its friggin' mind all the time. It's not strange to see a bear on fire running in circles around a dude who absolutely apparently hates the wall of a nearby building. No one has to be inside that building, by the way. He just hates it. And then to their right is a guy getting into and out of a truck repeatedly, like the world's loneliest version of Last Man Standing. Also, don't ask them to drive anywhere or anything but the slowest of vehicles. They just panic driving off to the side of the road, smashing into enemies on the other side of the road. In fact, friendlies on the other side of the road, everything. They just seem to always want to go to the other side of the road. Also, the order in which you do the locations is going to dramatically impact your playthrough. If you do Faith's area first, it's easiest to consider her missions like down in a 10-pound bucket of peyote and then handing out guns and telling everybody they shoot friggin' rainbows. It's a mind screw. It's an unadulterated what the hell series of moments with random visions in the middle of firefights, cats turning into humans, humans turning into bears, and some hot chick trying to sell you her version of the end times with a passionate voice while pulling off some sound of music dance number in the center of a gun battle. And none of that is hyperbole, that actually happens. This means that tonally the game shifts a great deal from the somewhat realistic idea of a cult gone wrong to pure fantasy and then back again. Of course, you don't have to do the campaign mode. You can do the arcade mode. It's here in all its glory with a full editor to make your own levels and throw them into the game and also have them seen by others. Downloading maps is pretty easy. You just click play it and it does so. And last but not least, let's talk about microtransactions. Are they there? Yes, and everything can be purchased with in-game cash, but prestige items, think the normal items but with better skins, are purchased with either money or silver bars. And there's a bit of a rub here that I don't like. Every time you go into almost any store, and there are a number of them in the game world, you're beset by the typical two-pronged pricing approach in the better looking items. This is something that really didn't happen as much in Origins. It happens every time here. And also, they're downright expensive. Five bucks is the lowest buy-in, getting you 500 silver bars, and while some of the guns and cars cost less than that, many don't. It should also be noted that you get silver bars in the game also if you save outposts, and also the fact that there's so many of them, there's so many vehicles, so many boats, so many airplanes, that it feels like you could never really get anywhere close to all of them. In the end, those are pretty bothersome. As a complete package, I would say, Far Cry 5 can be an absolute blast to explore, and due to the way the game is experienced, the entire tale can change, and that is to the developer's credit. Whether you engage in that or not, or like that or not, is of course something different. I did. 20 hours into it, and suddenly the entire tone shifted, and it wasn't halfway through even, and it was just this interesting take on the title. Fun factor. There is a ton to do in Far Cry 5, and much of it is fun. It's Quest progression is magnificent compared to many other games, as is the exploration style of gameplay that we've seen other titles take. Far Cry 5 leaps onto their shoulders and adds more, and with a friend, of course, in co-op, the fun factor can be insanely high. But the AI really does hurt the game. It just does. It's spawned far too often, and its reliance on spawning behind you to surprise you during battles just never really feels as organic as the world, I think, would like you to see and feel that it is. Additionally, in a maybe a Far Cry 4 where you're in this contested zone, it seems a little bit more realistic. Here, not so much. But let's be honest, this needed a more judicious hand to controlling the game world. When it makes Far Cry 4 feel like it's empty, you know you might have a little issue. 
So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. This is a wait for a sale. For Far Cry games, it's always two steps forward, one step back, and the improvements here are keen, but what my gameplay always came down to was the fact that the spawning system was just so out of control and everything felt so messy over time. Any engagement I wanted to have would always be infected by some type of badger or creature leaping in and attacking everybody. And at first that was fine, but when it stopped characters from being able to talk to me because they get halfway through their sentence and then some animal would attack and it reset everybody, that just started to get a little bit bothersome. So that's it for me. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Reddit or Twitter. And of course, you can become a patron on the Patreon website for the channel because that'll continue to help me do reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And as always, I buy every single game I review, even if I got a code from the dev. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.